Mansell is preparing for an altogether different event. We have found some amateur sleuths keen to investigate a make-believe murder in a stately home. And so they come to Mansell, as Chaucer once did, the guests for their weekend of murder mystery play-acting. While Sir Benjamin Julian Anthony Slade waits to perform his own turn as one of the barmaid of Britain's 1300 baronets. Lindsay with her friend Joe, incongruously a fellow devotee of the White Chapel Society, whose members share a fascination with the Jack the Ripper murders. Ben Slade, ben. welcome to Morsel House. Thank you very Thanks much. Thank well, you. Awesome. Right, Thank come you. in. Help Thank yourself. You. Thank you. Right. Lindsay, this is your room. Biggest room in the house. <laughs> wow. It's like imagining it. Look at the size of that bed. It's very comfy. For me, being in such a grand room, you do kind of feel as though you feel a bit more important, maybe, and that your status increases slightly. Definitely, I feel quite regal. Welcome to Walsall House, Ben Slade. Hello. Oh, my dear. Very good to meet you. Ben Slade. Hello. Hi. Hello. I'm Andy. This is my right, wife. Come in. Arthur. Help yourself. Right. Liza and Andy, this is your room. Wow. That's, uh, yes. yes. <laughs> bigger bed than that's brilliant. That's, that's absolutely fantastic. That's lovely. It's better than your average premier in room. At Monsell, the silver service dinner is about to get underway. The green plates, we're just going to put them in the middle, but I don't. I don't think it's going to A daunting they fold table. I actually feel quite nervous. I thought, I don't know if that's hunger. It might just be hunger. I'm really looking forward to dinner tonight. I'm quite familiar with table etiquette. I've worked in five-star hotels, but now it'll be me as the guest, which I haven't had that privilege before. On its day, Mansell is a very class act indeed. Hiring the house for your friends will cost you £10,000 for a Saturday night. But Sir Benjamin does host more modest events as well. well don't sit on your handbag, my dear. That would be... That's a terrible photo. <laughs> Mansell drapes its glittering spell over the guests, broken only by Sir Benjamin's conversation. We've got two, um, two gay ghosts in the house. <laughs> We do know because they put the willies up each other. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone got a key then? <laughs> the door. Has anybody written the history of your family and published it or anything? Nothing's published yet. It's so appalling you really wouldn't want to read it. On the menu tonight is confit of duck salad, followed by leg of lamb, fondant potatoes, sauté wild mushrooms, pancetta wrapped beans, and chantonade carrots. I envy you more than anyone because this is my dream place to live. Ever since I was a little girl, I have loved to live in somewhere like this, sumptuous. And, I mean, I grew up in a you know, very humble area, six of us in a two-bedroom house. Never had my own bedroom or anything, sharing with my sisters. Very poor background compared to yourself, and yet, for me, this would be my like a palace, of it, I suppose, and yet for yourself, who's grown up with this environment. Yeah, but no, I mean, I was the youngest son of the youngest son, so I wasn't expecting inheritance. You know, I had to buy everything back. If you go to the gents' loo, you will see that um, the rates were a pound a year on this place, because it was unhappy. There were no floorboards and things. Ben's a funny mix of the old-style squire, enjoying playing the genial host, and a more burdened man oppressed by the costs of Mansell and what he has to do to meet them. I would be really happy if my name was Mr Smith and I didn't have to go around Sotheby's and Christie's buying back lots of furniture and family items and didn't have to worry about this. I'd like to live in a modern house and have the concrete round it and uh, life would be a lot simpler. But I love you because you're so quirky. I'm not quirky. I think I'm the white sheep of the family. Yeah, you're not. You're absolutely gorgeous. And we're going to have lots of, lots of, lots of kisses and cuddles. Oh, right, right. Definitely. Charge extra for but that. But nothing horizontal. No, not at all. I'm too old. Mm. Is that OK? Me, I've had it, you know. Yeah, you've had it. Had it? How many times have you had it? What? I don't know. That was years ago. <laughs> 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 Yeah. 
One of Monsell's more bizarre days is about to unfold. Porridge, madame. I'm fine, thank you. The murder mystery day has begun, with breakfast in full Victorian regalia. Goodly porridge. Do you good. Thank you very much. It's enough to trouble the appetite of the doughtiest baronet, but the bills need paying and Ben does his best to jolly things along. Gentlemen serve themselves at breakfast. It's a biological fact, that. Gentlemen always help themselves at breakfast. What? Somebody's got my bloody hat on. Good morning. My name is Sergeant Crabb. Judge Winston Corbett will not be joining you. Judge Winston Corbett is dead. What I'd like you to do is help us solve this crime. Yes, Ben. There really are people who enjoy this sort of thing. But then, in this strangest of days, the most unfortunate example of life following artifice. As the Victorian make-believe policemen strut their stuff in the dining room, there's a bit of a kerfuffle in the porter cabins when a carload of distinctly modern-looking police turn up unexpectedly. From then on, events move rather quickly. Sir Ben called away, looking rather urgent. The murder mystery people left puzzled by the sudden disappearance of their genial host. At the front door, the make-believe police are happily ignorant, blithely pursuing their Cluedo criminal. While round the back, the doves are all in a flutter at the arrival of the constabulary. It seems a rather desperate way for Ben to extricate himself from what threatened to become a painful day. How could they be married, do you happen to know, roughly? The amateur sleuths are none the wiser. It's a police matter. I can't really disclose any much more information about that. Uh, and the day ploughs on, the guests mystified. I saw Benjamin briefly this morning at breakfast, but uh, I don't know where he is now. I'm sure um, he's sort of allowing his guests to get on with the fun and exploring the grounds and, and everything. It's, it's um, possibly not his cup of tea. No, he's disappeared. Maybe he's been taken hostage. They seek him here. They seek him with their beady eyes there. Ben has rushed off somewhere. I haven't seen him. i seen him this morning. Now he's just disappeared, but he should be back soon. That's what he's like. He's better away with the fairies. At the very moment when the mystery is about to be revealed... I, and at least one of you, knows who the killer is. Sir Benjamin is unavoidably detained, aiding the eager inquiries of Somerset and Avon police. Leaving the members of the Whitechapel Society rather nonplussed, and with only fond memories of their host. Ben has already asked me to be his friend on Facebook, and of course I will. I liked him because, although he's sort of an aristocrat or whatever you call them, he was just so normal and so welcoming and so non PC, and I mean, he's just absolutely brilliant fun. It could fairly be called a funny old day at Monsell. The empty chair beckons. Ben plainly has some explaining to do. Well, the murder had been announced, and suddenly we got a message that there was some um, uh, that, that there were some police on the on the premises, and it's to do with the licensing of firearms, and uh, that's all I can say at the moment. Another eventful day in the life of one of England's more colourful aristocrats. I suppose I'd better go and make sure the office is locked up. 